Hey guys, where was God in the making of the Bible? Are we talking first and second century whenever there were scribes and there were Jews who went back to the law and they held to the Tanakh and the Torah? Are those the guys? Are those the ones? Was it them? Was it their councils? Was it Constantine in the 300s? Is this the making? Is this where God was at in the making of the Bible? What I'm trying to show you here is that God had nothing to do with the making of the Bible. Constantine, to be a general in Rome in that day and age, you had to be a great warrior. I mean, to be an emperor in Rome, you had to be a great warrior. The army was the thing to go. You didn't have to be, but it really helped you during political times. Constantine strangled his wife in the bathtub. He killed thousands of people with a sword. He strangled his wife. He bore the rumors of her sleeping with his stepson, and he had his stepson killed. He had many people fed to lions. It was really horrific times. Was it King Clovis, the protector of Christ's bloodline? who had a thousand man army that went from town to town killing anybody who wasn't Christian. King Clovis, who used to do the, I forget what it was called, but to see if you were a sinner or not, they would stick your hand in boiling oil. And then if you made it through it and didn't wind up getting gangrene or something, then, then you were a righteous person. Well, King Clovis, these are the reasons that we have the Bible. King Clovis had a thousand man army and he went from town to town killing anybody who wasn't Christian and he killed every single person in his family because back in the day, he was king of the Franks. And back in the day, anybody under the French custom, anybody who was in your family could usurp your throne. So he killed every single person in his family. Then you've got people like Justinian, Emperor Justinian, during the bubonic plague, <clears throat> where he put 30,000 unsuspecting fans, lured them into the Colosseum, and killed every one of them unarmed, killed every one of them. He made it through the bubonic plague, but most of the people in his kingdom didn't. And he went from town to town also killing and burning anybody. He would burn your family, your babies in barns if they were not Catholic. All right. What's his name? Theo, Theoda? I don't even remember his name. But he's the one who made the Catholic Church. The He pretty much put out an edict that said if you weren't Catholic, you could be killed. And that was 380, 380 AD. I forget his name. I don't know why it's just slipped my mind. But so is it people like Constantine, Justinian, Clovis? You've got King Charlemagne. There were other ones. There were Otho. There were uh, so many other people that were terrible. And this is how Christianity came about. It wasn't some, from some peace-loving gospel of preaching Jesus to everybody. That's not how Christianity got here. That's not how the Bible got here. It was through ruthless murder, killing, and killing anybody who was not Christian. And you can break it all the way down to your grandma. You can break it all the way down to, if you would have said something about the Bible 100 years ago, your grandma would have beat you and cast you out of the family. Uh, you can, it goes so far back that with religious oppression. But was it Charlemagne who went over 50 military campaigns in 48 years, killing anybody who wasn't Christian? They said the river ran with blood. They said he killed 4,500 people in one sitting. In one sitting, chopped their heads off. He said, you either accept Christ, get baptized under the authority of the Pope, or you get your head chopped off, you and your family. And they said the river ran with blood for three days because how many people did he kill? Do you think it was people like Calvin? Are you a Calvinist? All these people were burning each other at the stake. Thousands of people were burned at the stake during these wars between the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. Do you think it was William Tyndale who made a Bible for a king that's going to chop his wife's head off, heads off and hang him on London Bridge whenever he was the impotent one? He, they were, he hung his own wives on London Bridge, called himself the emperor, said he was the head of the church broke off from the Catholics. This is how the Bible got here. Calvin had another long lifetime scholar burned at the stake under his words, had him burned at the stake because he disagreed with him. These are the way that the Bible got here. This is the way that it, that it, that it happened. You've got King James, 
who had secret tunnels leading into his chambers. And again, I am not saying anything about homosexuality or even my thoughts on it. So you have no idea what I think about that, and I'm not putting that in there. But he had secret chambers leading into his uh, quarters where he could sleep with men. He was buried between his two favorite lovers in Westminster Abbey. King James, most of his children died because he hated his wife, because he hated his family. They died from malnourishment. He's a king, and they died from malnourishment. He said, what did he say? I'm trying to think of it exactly. He said that he preferred young Scottish lads with well-turned legs and a firm buttocks. This was King James, guys. That's his quote from history. And the Bible says it talks against homosexuality. But the only reason that you guys have a Bible is because King James brought the Catholics and Protestants together and authorized it and stopped the war because his mother was uh, Catholic and his father was Protestant. And they were both killed because of it. So he stopped the war and got them together. And that's the reason that you have a Bible is because of a homosexual king. So you people who say homosexuality is bad, the only reason you know anything about God is from a homosexual. Less than 5% of the people in the world had ever read a Bible by the 1700s. In the 1900s, men in America, the most advanced society on the earth at the time, were still putting their X on the line because they couldn't read. They were still illiterate. The elementary school boom, that didn't happen until the 1940s, whenever electricity and everything started to come about. So who was it? Was it the Protestant Reformation that came over and killed all the Indians? Gave them disease? Cut their children's head off? I mean, these guys are waving Bibles, cutting these children's heads off and riding around on with their heads on stakes on horses they wiped out 90 million people the civil war the civil war everybody on each side believed that they knew god they believed that their way was right and they were killing their own brothers i mean actual physical my mom had both of us i'm gonna kill you because i disagree with your view I think we should have slaves, which we all know wasn't just about slaves, but <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. Their views were all different. So when was it? Was it whenever America, look, whenever Rome had the Bible, they ruled the world. What is this type? Whenever Rome had the Bible, they ruled the world. Whenever England gave the Bible to everybody, they ruled the world. But then whenever America had their presidents start swearing on the Bible, they ruled the world. 1940, in the 1940s, whenever they dropped the atomic bombs, Bible worshippers dropped the atomic bombs. Bible worshipping presidents ordered them to drop the atomic bombs. They swear on the Bible. These guys are not of God. When do you think the Bible was of God? Whenever mankind made, whenever a country that supposedly is built on God because of the Bible and has the Ten Commandments hanging in the most prestigious courtroom in the world, in the Supreme Court, the innermost court of the Supreme Court, the Ten Commandments hang between a plaque on the wall of the majesty of law and the power of government. That's where the Ten Commandments hang, an administration of death and condemnation. When do you think God had a part in this, had a part in the president swearing on the Bible? Why is it that wherever the Bible went, those people ruled the world? The Catholics for a thousand years from Rome, uh, the Protestants and the English and the Protestant Reformation, and then America. Whoever worshipped the Bible most had the most power. Why? It is because if you go back to the Bible, you reject everything that Christ has done. When has God been behind the Bible? Never. Ever since it was made. These are wicked, murderous people who made the Bible. When has God been a part of it? There are so many more. In my mind, I'm having trouble even making this video because I keep wanting to trail off on everything else and just give you all the wars and all the history and all the kings and all the emperors, but I can't. As this video would be five hours long. So when seeing the people who were most, uh, who were the most involved with making the Bible, when was God involved with it? Never. When was there a godly man who ever helped in the making of the Bible? And why, in such a wicked world, would the Bible be the best-selling book of all time with the greatest armies on earth, that has the least persecution, the biggest religion? Why would that be? 
Why would that be in such a wicked world? And why would these kings and the most powerful men in the world in America be able to swear on the Bible? Everybody in the world knows that the most powerful man in the world, it's going to change, but up until now, have been the American presidents in America. And they swear on the Bible. Why would that happen? Why would the most wicked men be able to do this? Everybody thinks they can just go down the store and buy the word of God for $5. It doesn't work like that. It's because Jesus already fulfilled all those things. Watch my other videos about how Christ already returned. He already fulfilled all those things and going back to it rejects him and everything that he's done. God had no part in the making of the Bible.